Since the dawn of history, man has sought to create life from nothing, to work, to entertain, and to prove humanity's dominance of the natural world. Simulacra are born for a singular purpose. Created from mud or machine, the simulacra is an interesting creature in that it is entirely man-made and built to serve man. This separates it from many other mythical creatures as its existence is not brought about by some curse or sin or even disease, rather it would come to be through the conscious concerted efforts of human beings. Initially created from magically animated mud, the simulacra took the form of a golem. Able to perform immense feats of strength, this original version of the creature was very dull and quite slow, given its earth and nature. Constructed in a large humanoid form, it is animated through the use of a shem, which is an object or script that contains the golem's essential being and is usually inserted into the mouth of the golem. The shem can also be removed, which will deanimate the creature, returning it to its original form of an inert statue. Later simulacra are not necessarily meant to serve any physical purpose, but rather fill an emotional need in the creator's life. As such, the material and cognitive capacity of the simulacra can vary. From gingerbread to wood, these creatures are animated by an intense longing and love, or even a wish. Of course, magic isn't the only animating force of a simulacra, indeed, some are not even inherently physical in nature. Statues are often built to spiritually guard places or people. These statues can exist as single entities or vast armies made of stone or clay. They are usually meant to represent a home for the guardian spirit rather than its physical form, and they will often curse the living who disturb their charges or provide their rulers with servants and power in the afterlife. As our civilization marches ever forward, we have seen the simulacra change as our understanding of the universe has grown. Mad or fringe science has thus given life to the lifeless constructed from myriad corpses to defy creation, or built from metal as mindless servants, technology is the dominant manner of construction for simulacra in the modern world, where robots or human-robot hybrids are not only physically powerful, but also intelligent, making for a massive advancement in our conception of this creature that ensured it would remain with us in the modern era. Although one may not think the simulacra to be a common creature in modern times, it is surprisingly rather easy to come across under different names and shapes. Initially, the word golem has come to describe any autonomous creature constructed from various minerals and is not limited to the mud construct from Jewish mythology. We find this version of the creature more often represented in video games and books, although not very often in films. Interestingly, much of the written media about golems sees this creature making a remarkable upsurge during the 20th and 21st centuries, with many books such as Der Golem by Gustav Menrich, published in 1941, which is considered one of the more influential works helping solidify the myth of the golem in Western society. Of course, the simulacra as a whole exists in many parts of the world, with the gingerbread man and Pinocchio representing more common forms of this creature in Western myth, and although gargoyles were originally conceived for decorative and practical purposes, evolutions in Western culture find them becoming very similar to the golem, but with the purpose of protection rather than servitude ascribed to their existence. Hongorokishi are also rather common creatures in Asian mythology and religion. Usually coming in pairs, these guardian statues are erected in Buddhist temples to protect believers from harm. Built to be quite imposing, these statues are often very large and also rather aggressive in countenance, with their mouths posed in the process of announcing hum or um. This sound is supposedly the last utterance one gives before their death. There are of course stranger simulacra, which are perhaps best represented by Frankenstein's monster. In Mary Shelley's famous book, a mad doctor constructs a whole man using an amalgam of corpses. The resulting creature represents man's triumph over nature. However, we see an interesting twist in that Frankenstein's monster is articulate and intelligent and, through the story, comes to represent at once both the corrupting influence of human pride and base needs, while also demonstrating and inseminating the concept that what we create has the potential to be morally and physically superior to ourselves. 
we see this latter point emphasized in modern science fiction works, where our contemporary simulacra, robots, are initially our servants, but eventually come to pose a significant and lethal threat to our continued existence. Interestingly, we see that woven into the core conception of the robot and computers in general is the idea that they will inevitably start to become more threatening to us and, at some point, bring about the destruction or enslavement of humanity. In fact, this enslavement or destruction is often presented as divine retribution for meddling in God's domain, to wit, creating life. This aspect of the narrative is often used to play into our technophobic and neophobic tendencies. Although, there are other works of fiction that force a more interesting question upon us, asking what essentially defines humanity. As our technology improves, the line between our simulacra and humanity is blurred and frequently challenged, as not only our creations, but we ourselves change. The oldest known simulacra is the golem of Jewish fables. According to the Talmud, Adam, the first man, was originally no different from a golem, and by God he was given life. However, man-made attempts at replicating the golem would result in an incomplete creature. Supposedly, the golem was unable to speak, a factor which was undesirable to the sages that created them. Thus, as imperfect humans, they were sometimes used for menial labor in Jewish stories and make surprisingly frequent appearances throughout Jewish lore. Many spiritually based simulacra take the form of guardian souls or demons that can be frequently found throughout the Middle East and ancient Egypt, as well as Asia. Indeed, the Egyptians would take this concept one step further by creating simulacra of everyday objects to take into the afterlife. These soul items included ships, servants and food, as well as everyday luxuries. In Europe, we find various simulacra in addition to more popular myths, such as the gingerbread man. Galatea is a famous statue carved by the sculptor Pygmalion. According to myth, the statue of a woman came to life, and modern tellings of the story sees Pygmalion falling in love with this creature. In Africa, the Tokoloshi is sometimes a diminutive artificial human being with magical powers. However, it should be noted that due to the nature of oral tradition, the Tokoloshi has come to take many forms and purposes, including a lustful demon or even a cursed magician. When one considers the various independent occurrences of simulacra throughout history, it reveals much about our own desires, namely that we wish to create life with our own hands, in our own image, and also, to a lesser extent, we wish to create a powerful tireless servant with inhuman strength and little or no need for maintenance. Nowhere is this former point best demonstrated than during the 16th century. In the midst of the search for endless life and endless gold, alchemy was also looking to create life from nothing. This creature, perhaps inspired by the mandrake root, was called an homunculus. With exaggerated proportions and small size, the homunculus would supposedly serve the alchemist who created it. This creature represents the first time relatively serious academic thought considered the creation of artificial life to be within the realm of possibility. According to legend, during this era of alchemy, Judah Lo ben Bezazel, a rabbi in Prague, brought a statue to life in defense of the Jews in the ghettos of Prague, who were enduring a pogrom. And some centuries later, while visiting Prague, the writer Karl Kapek wrote the play R.U.R., Rossum's Universal Robots, wherein he invents the word robot to describe an artificial human being. Naturally, this word has come into common use since then, and the overall narrative featuring a robot uprising has seen frequent use in science fiction as well. At last, this brings us to the more modern depiction of simulacra in robots and computers. The 1927 film Metropolis saw the first depiction of robots as being constructed from metals, and was an interesting, although important, departure from those depicted in RUR. RUR envisioned robots in a similar manner to what we might understand to be cyborgs in our modern times, where the robots were more biological than mechanical. These two variations gave birth to a continuum of simulacra, extending from clones all the way to bulky mechanical giants. RUR was created during the time when mechanisms were well understood, but computational engines were still quite primitive. With the invention of the Turing machine, and further advances in this technology, we have finally developed an artificial approximation of biological adaptive feedback systems in the form of the microprocessor. This brings us at last to the modern day, where simulacra are as varied and as common as one can imagine. From nebulous hive-minded beings to all-powerful servants and even singular godlike computers, the simulacra myth shows no sign of slowing its evolution. The reification of this artificial creature is simple and yet simultaneously challenging. 
While golems and living dolls would seem like fantasy in times long past, the modern world has seen humanity give birth to many miracles, of which robots and other autonomous creations are not only real, but are increasingly commonplace. Thus, the question of whether the creation of this creature is possible is a moot point. With robots capable of running, or computers capable of matching some of the smartest human minds we have, by way of effort and time, transmuted magic into science. But these creations lack some vital animating force. Computers and mechanical creations require human input and influence to perform the most basic of tasks, and are somewhat clumsy and frail. For although we have advanced the science greatly, we are nevertheless still some way off from creating true artificial life. So how might we turn our rather adequate slaves into something we would be proud to call our children? Several potential solutions exist. The most obvious manner in which we might achieve this is with self-adaptive programming algorithms. These systems are mostly used for military purposes, with support robots that have, over several executions of these algorithms, succeeded in balancing their chassis on legs, and even adapting to sudden impediments or forces which would otherwise disrupt the balance of these machines. However, this solution is inherently dependent on the power of the microprocessor housed within, and as such, complicated and numerous simultaneous operations within the algorithm are limited to bare necessity, and, thus, are unable to produce what we might recognize as cognition. Increasing the computational capacity of our microprocessors is often seen as the most expedient manner in which to overcome the present limitations of our simulacra. Indeed, with Moore's law, we would inevitably create a computational system powerful enough to render agency. However, Moore's law is outdated. We have reached a limit in our miniaturization processes, and transistors, the heart of the microprocessor, can hardly get any smaller. Additionally, with more transistors comes greater energy consumption and additional thermal output, meaning that we shall struggle to power and cool our transistor technology in future. Overcoming this has seen little headway, although tests and theories do bring hope in the form of ideas such as quantum computing, which employs atoms in all their uncertain glory to replace the transistor. Exotic transistor chip architecture is also often invoked, with Sony's cell processor and IBM's neurosynaptic synapse chip, which emulate the construction of biological systems. Should these latter two advances bear fruit, we shall perhaps find our simulacra varying only in the materials from which their thoughts arise, as they could well bear an artificial nervous system similar to our own. Looking further afield to the presently fantastical concepts rendered by science fiction, we may find ourselves discarding our bodies in favor of man-made ones. With advances in prosthetics and various body augmentations, the transhumanist movement seeks to dismantle the differentiation between creators and created. Both of these concepts, transhumanism and advanced computation, are explored to a surprising degree in Ghost in the Shell, a manga published from 1989 to 1990. Although it follows a rather simple sci-fi narrative, the story serves as an adequate delivery medium for a rather complicated and well-examined look into and the reification of the creation of artificial brains and bodies. Indeed, transhumanism is quite an interesting subject on its own, with many outlets dedicated to producing content related to this topic. Most notably, the video game series Deus Ex, which has enjoyed a successful reboot in the past few years. Apart from its unique gameplay, this series is also known for its well-researched optional exposition that explores various aspects of our potentially transhumanist future. Considering the volume of work and discourse related to these topics, we must ask ourselves, could it well be that our future, and the future of our simulacra, is headed down the same path? Let us know your thoughts on the matter in the comments below. Despite our limitations, it is certainly clear that we have indeed created this creature, and modern robots are certainly an adequate representation of this mythical beast in both form and function. Who knows what strange and interesting forms the simulacra may yet take?